Diamond with a magnet on it, and it's glued on, eh? glued on. <coughs> and the magnets, just loose magnets, and uh, what we have here is uh, strange attractions. Okay, so diamonds slow light down, and when light passes through them, they emit beta particles. Beta particles are um, the um, electrons, huh? And there's a neutron inside of the, the crystal lattice that has an extra, it's an extra neutron in the carbon atom, carbon-14 instead of carbon-13. And it gives off the, uh, the mass of an electron to try to become a proton, right? And th which means carbon turns from carbon into nitrogen. <coughs> okay, so... So between these two magnets, those, uh, those electrons are coming out of there controlled. I can control them by the magnetic field. And probably if I, uh, if I turn my uh, light off here, we'll be able to see them better. behind me uh, and we're, this is nighttime in, in Phoenix Arizona and so uh, what we have here is uh, two magnets close to each other with a diamond and, and it, it, this diamond produces a rainbow color all on its own hmm? but it needs light uh, not much, because any sort of light creates uh, beta emissions. It stimulates those carbon-14 neutrons into giving off an electron. And so when we, when we look at this close up, we can actually see those electrons in the in the dark um, like this, and that's what causes that fuzziness there and that blue glow. Um, that's probably just because of the size and nature of the light and the size of the diamond. Uh, that is the depth that it formed at, and so the the planes of cleavage are a particular size in there that creates blue light. Okay, because the, the light passes through um, and bounces uh, from each layer, and each layer is the half the distance of that particular color of blue. And so it goes down one to the other side of the layer, half the distance of a wavelength of light, and then goes up the other half at an angle, like like what you can see there. You know, the comes down like in a in a triangle, boom, and then heads off in the other direction at an angle, uh, and that angle is determined by the, the, the width of that, uh, that layer. And, and it's in three dimensions here, right? Three dimensions, so it's not just a layer, it's all those rows and columns of uh, carbon atoms all lined up together and they, they form in unit cells. 
uh, of 13 atoms. And, and the, so it mimics the, the carbon 13, right, which has 13 uh, protons and neutrons in its nucleus. Uh, and so carbon 13 is the most stable carbon because it's involved with diamonds. Uh, carbon 12 is stuff like um, like graphite, okay? And there's actually probably more diamond uh, than there is graphite. They're not little, scarce, or hard to find. Most people call them quartz. But they're not. Quartz can't do this kind of stuff. You know what happens when you do that to a piece of glass, even? It'll block those uh, signals because it's not a conductor of magnetism. Now, ceramic is different. Many magnets are ceramic. In including these guys, they're, they're made out of a ceramic and coated with a, like stainless steel or something. Um, and the, 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 um, the reason is because they're made from these metals. Um, and AU and PT are, are they're one elect proton electron pair apart 79 and 78 pro protons, respectively. Gold and platinum. Platinum only has 78, but it's denser. And they create, because of that difference between the number of protons, creates a s slight magnetic field that causes them to align themselves in a north-south orientation. Diamonds have double-double covalent bonds also. I can hold this in my hand and drill it, cut it, polish it, and I don't have to use water. It never gets hot. Never gets hot. When, when you cut diamonds, they, they, the d professional diamond cutters do not use water. They use a, a, like a handheld device that lets them work on each facet individually. Um, and it's, there's a bunch of math involved to make these facets all come out right, huh? And, and um, what we've got here is carbon. It's been squeezed together so much the same thing as graphite, right? Like the lead in pencils. It's not lead, it's carbon. And this got squeezed together so so tightly that light can pass through it now. It is the most clear substance on the face of the earth because of those double-double covalent bonds. And, and so light passes right through it, much more so than, than silicon dioxide. Um, because that only has a single covalent bond, and the, and the bonds that, that hold those things together have to do with the way that light passes through it. And the double-double covalent bonds are why diamonds are so very, very, very transparent, um, because the, the uh, energy level can go up and stay up there. Uh, which lets light pass through without resistance. Light is magnetic energy. It passes through space-time. And the only way we know it's there is when it reacts with something else. Right? Hmm, look around, and, and there's light on things, right? 
But like my pants, or I, I'm sitting here in the dark. Right? The only thing that's lighting up is my diamond. And it, and it does that with just the stray ambient light in my living room from my wife's reading light over there. And it's giving off electrons. <laughs> they are electrons leaving that diamond at the speed of light because they're a product of fission. The fission of a neutron becoming a proton and growing into a new heavier element. Because the universe is growing all the time. It's not didn't stop growing or 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 um, nor did it accelerate. It's always been growing at some Fibonacci number. All things grow by Fibonacci numbers because that's how things fit together. And things like uh, hydrogen atoms forming into all the other elements. And they do that one at a time. One, two, three. One plus one is two. Plus one is three. Right? So the, the, the last two create the next number. Right? The previous two the sum of the previous two create the next number. So, so if I've got five from three, right? Two plus three is five. The next number is eight. The next number is 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and the twelfth number is twelve squared. A hundred and forty-four. It's my magic number, and and I play it every time they ask one of those, uh, you know, guess a number games. And I have won. I mean, out of maybe a hundred times, won exactly once. So that's how much magic numbers work. Peace, y'all.